Harden my pancreas. Welcome to another episode of the Type 1 Diabetes Focused Podcast on how to control your blood sugars. Today I want to talk to you about proactive versus reactive strategies for blood sugar management and how I almost accidentally rolled off the edge of a cliff a few hours ago. Let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so in today's episode, obviously we're talking about blood sugar management, proactive versus reactive. But as you would likely know, we're starting with a story. So a couple hours ago, I decided to go for a nice bike ride. Now, my nice bike rides differ in the fact that if I see a shiny object off the side of the road, I'm going to that shiny object off the side of the road. So <laughs> I ended up turning what started as a nice leisurely ride down a paved road into mountain bike riding off the road, hitting bushes and going off, of course, big hills, jumps, and even almost a cliff. So. In today's kind of adventure that I took upon myself, I wanted to go out and get some exercise. And so beforehand, I took it upon myself to look at my blood sugars, take a peek. Of course, they were in range. Thankfully, who loves starting exercise in range? I was at 125 and stable. Now, I had already uh, limited existing variables. I wasn't falling blood sugars. I wasn't seeing my blood sugar spike. I hadn't just eaten a meal. I, I got into a controlled environment where Exercise is probably going to behave relatively consistently with what I had seen in the past, right? Uh, it's going to be relatively predictable. And so with that, I knew there could be proactive strategies that I could take upon myself to implement in order to see more stable blood sugars through my bike ride. Now, of course, within our program on type 1 diabetes, I do teach my clients on how to use what's known as a formula. or well, not what's known as a formula. It is a formula. It's called the 80-20 blood sugar formula. And so I use that in my life as well. And a piece of that formula is proactive. So we teach them how to look at a situation, analyze it, and go, okay, I need to do X, Y, Z in order to keep my blood sugars right where I want them, or if they're not where I want them, how to get them where I want them by the end of that activity, right? So using that formula, that approach, that proactive nature of the formula, I approached and said, okay, I'm at 125. What can I do right now to make sure I stay around 125? So within mountain biking, slightly different than going to the gym, slightly different than running a marathon, right? Slightly different than any other kind of exercise because it's a bit more unpredictable. Now, I have a mountain bike, but I was planning on just cruising going down some paved roads, <laughs> really simple. Uh, and so proactively, I want to make sure that I avoided a drop in exercise or a drop in blood sugars. Because for me, I tend to drop with more aerobic activities, right? And if you're unfamiliar with some of these terms, uh, there's a link in the description of the video or of the podcast you can check out for more info on that. Uh, but with this exercise, I had already planned a proactive approach. Now, halfway into my ride, I noticed something off to the side of the road. I looked at my side, there were jumps, there were berms, there were dugout trenches, there was an entire racetrack built into this dirt plot of land, and my eyes lit up. My eyes got real wide, I was like, oh, oh, oh I gotta try that out. Now I have a mountain bike, it's not anything fancy, it's pretty standard, but I wanted to put it to the test. I hadn't been out biking in a while, so I veered off into the dirt lot, and I started doing little mini jumps, and I'm, I'm not pro by any, I got like, maybe six inches of air, it felt like 10 feet. You know, I'm like, wow, flying! And there's some guy probably at the side just like, who is this goofball? Like, <laughs> thinking he's a pro mountain biker. But it's still fun, still uh, a bit of adrenaline, right? We're going off little jumps and having fun with it. And, uh, and I continue on. It, it tires me out pretty quick because those, uh, those tracks take a lot of energy. Pedal, 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 jump, pedal, 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 pedal. So we get back on the paved road and lo and behold, about 10 minutes later, I see a mountain with a path up the side of the mountain. I decide to go for it, because why not? I have a mountain bike. I should use it on the mountains, right? And uh, you know, I'm kind of circling through my head like, wait a second, I, I took steps 
necessary for a chill ride. I am quickly ramping up the intensity of this mountain biking excursion, this adventure I'm now going on, you know, going on jumps and berms and now up the side of mountains. The exercise classification is changing rapidly. <laughs> it's no longer a leisurely ride and my heart rate is pounding. If you haven't noticed it already, if you're watching the video, this fun little bracelet I got on right here, this is actually a, a data collection tool something I've been utilizing now for 31 days. Just crossed my first month with it. I'm very excited about it. Um, as you probably know, I am into data collection, right? The, the entire premise of our formula-driven approach for blood sugar prediction is about data collection, data analysis, looking at blood sugars and patterns and trends and, and figuring out how to use that to our advantage. So I got this fun thing. It measures my heart rate, respirations, and all sorts of other stuff that I'm still learning about. But during this mountain bike ride, I saw my heart rate go from nice and relaxed, you know, maybe 120, maybe 130. As soon as I started climbing that mountain, 160, 170, which in case you're familiar with personal training and heart rate and all that kind of stuff, it's about my maximum heart rate that I should be exercising. I'm pushing the limits for my body. I'm heaving, just barely able to make it up the side of this hill. I get to the top. I saw this path down the other side that I wanted to check out. So I quick rode over to it and I hit the brakes and slid over and whoa, looked over the edge and it was steep. I tell you, I thought I was gonna slip over and fall to my death. I was like, okay, maybe I should take a moment to calculate my approach to this. Maybe it's not the exact next step I want to take. Maybe it's a little bit too dangerous. <laughs> so I kind of circled around a little bit, popped this thought in my head like, okay, the approach that I took for diabetes alone was proactive in the sense that I had planned ahead for a drop in my blood sugars. I had seen that in the past. Now I've mixed in adrenaline. I've mixed in higher heart rates, intense activity, spurts of energy. This is starting to mimic more anaerobic approach. Ooh, my blood sugars might start rising, right? So I have to take a new approach, reactive. When I look back at how I have been behaving, uh, the recent events, the recent situation that's built itself upon, my new strategy has to be reactive. I've changed the plan. It's become more spontaneous, more adventurous. And so I can no longer rely on the proactive approach that I've built for diabetes, right? And so often my clients will, uh, will talk about proactive versus reactive in the sense of, well, what if my friends wanna go for a hike and I get five minutes notice? Right? Can I be proactive then? Yes and no. There are certain strategies that you cannot implement with five minutes, right? <laughs> One of the, the key strategies you can no longer use, at least to its full utilization, would be basal adjustments. Basal adjustments take a while to build up. And so with our, our spontaneous plans taking a bit more of an effect, you have to switch how you approach diabetes management. It can no longer be a proactive approach of, I'm going to plan ahead because spontaneity is in effect the opposite of planning. It's what are we doing now or what have we done? What have we begun doing? And so with this new mountain biking adventure, my entire workout had changed. So now I had to change to a reactive approach. What actions did I take in order to try to mitigate the, the rises or falls of my blood sugars beforehand? How does those impact my current strategies with the current information I've been given? and that becomes a reactive strategy. So when we look at diabetes, unfortunately there's a lot of people, a lot of people, and you might be included in this, that only know of the reactive side. They only approach diabetes as, what's my blood sugar at now, and how do I fix it, right? There is no planning ahead because they were never taught to do that, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault at all. But unfortunately, so many of us we're never given the right information by our medical teams, our doctors, our endocrinologists. We're never taught how to plan ahead, how to set basal rates, how much food to eat, how carbs and fats and proteins impact blood sugars, how those related to exercise and how there's this amazing interrelationship between all these different variables, food, exercise, sleep, hydration, your mood even can impact blood sugars and how those are all connected in certain ways. And if you don't have that knowledge, Proactive planning, proactive strategies become very difficult, if not impossible, to implement in your life, especially in your life when it's shifting so often, right? And so we rely on these reactive strategies of, whew, ha, I'm at 300, what do I do now? Give insulin, I guess. An hour later, oh, I got double arrows down at 60. 
what do I do now? Ugh, eat sugar, I guess. And it becomes this huge guessing game of like, what do we do in this moment to quick fix it, throw a band-aid on it, more duct tape, try to fix the leak before it completely sinks the ship. And these reactive strategies can lead to madness, to utter frustration, not knowing why blood sugars are doing what they're doing, and ultimately, it can lead to burnout. Now within diabetes, we don't get breaks. We deal with this disease literally every single day, every single minute of every single day. And minute to minute, things can change. Minute to minute, my bike ride went from leisurely to really intense, honestly, some fear involved. <laughs> that cliff, the drop off was a lot steeper than I had imagined. I had to overcome some fear to continue with the ride. Okay? And it took me a second. <laughs> I had to convince myself, don't let fear hold you back. You got this, man. Literally talking to myself at the top of a mountain. But so often, these reactive strategies not only lead to frustration and potentially burnout, but they can hold you back. They can restrict you from living life to the fullest. Because if your blood sugars are tanking, you have to stop what you're doing to treat with sugar. If your blood sugars are through the roof, you feel nauseous, you feel sick, eating your next meal becomes difficult, you might have to go to the hospital for DKA. That is when diabetes can hold you back. That is when diabetes becomes a limitation because it infringes on your health, on your own well-being, on your quality of life. So recognize that you don't have to be stuck in a restrictive mode because of a reactionary status reactionary style of diabetes management. You can shift to a proactive strategy, but you have to know how all these different variables are interconnected. With that knowledge, you can craft a proper plan to live your life to the fullest, and understanding those proactive tools gives you the opportunity to tack on reactive strategies when it's necessary. But you should not be relying solely on reactive strategies, hoping that your blood sugars are going to cooperate. Okay? So, uh, I actually got to take off. I got another phone call with a, an amazing type 1 diabetic. But, lessons to take away from today's episode. There are proactive strategies. There are reactive strategies. Proactive will typically beat out reactive because it allows you to get in front of your blood sugars and set a smooth runway, right? So that you have the opportunity to enjoy life. Enjoy your meal. Enjoy your activity. And not be stressing about blood sugars. But, that knowledge is also foundational for the proper reactive strategy so that you can adapt on the fly when life gets crazy or spontaneous or you have an adventure or you just have super ADHD brain like mine and you get sidetracked and want to go right up the side of a mountain for some reason. <laughs> the knowledge of these type 1 strategies are going to open up new doors for you, give you the opportunity for freedom and flexibility. Now, if that interests you, the proactive strategies, the reactive strategies, the knowledge necessary to build the life that you want, to live the life that you want with blood sugars under control. If you want to understand how I run things, how I can go for that mountain biking ride, start at 125, end at 101. That was a 45 minute ride with complete spontaneity, doing what I want, doing what I love. If that sounds good to you, if you want to know more about the analytical side about diabetes, I highly recommend you check out the free training that I did recently at diabetesinaction.com. You can see why it got its name. It's all about living your life to the fullest with a higher quality of life with diabetes under control. So diabetesinaction.com to understand the proactive strategies, the reactive strategies, and how to craft your best life with time and range improving every single day. All right? So go check out that training. I'm going to head back out, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep up the fight. Oh, wait, before you take off, I wanted to close that story loop that I started in the beginning. I almost forgot to tell you that cliff that I almost accidentally fell off of, right? Or rather, almost rode off of. I did it. I sat there and I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. I have to conquer my fears. I cannot let myself hold me back from experiencing this. And I rode my bike off the edge of that cliff, down a path, and I ended up hooting and hollering the entire way down. It was a blast. I felt like I accomplished something and it was wonderful. So I took the leap, the leap of faith, as you're about to do right now. Click that link down below or go to your browser, type in diabetesinaction.com and just like I was hooting and hollering the whole way down that side of the mountain, having a blast because I overcame my fear, you're about to experience something amazing. You're gonna learn something new in this training that's completely free. 
Go check it out. Learn something new. It might actually change your life. I'll see you over there. Diabetesinaction.com. And keep up the fight.